Background. Sir Isaac Newton, he's an English scientist and mathematician famous for his discovery of the law of gravity, also discovered the three laws of motion. These laws are now known as Newton's laws of motion and they define the motion of all things on the scale that we encounter in our daily lives. Newton's first law states that an object will remain at rest or continue to move at constant velocity when the net force on the object is zero. Newton's second law states that an object will accelerate in the direction of the net force. The magnitude of the acceleration is directly proportional to the magnitude of the net force and inversely proportional to the object's mass. Newton's third law states that each action force has a reaction force that is equal in magnitude and opposite in direction. Law of inertia. If the net external force on an object is zero, the object will remain at rest or continue to move at a constant velocity. Inertia, the property of matter that causes it to resist changes in motion. Inertia is directly proportional to the mass of the object. What does this mean? Basically, an object will keep doing what it's doing unless acted on by an unbalanced force. If the object was sitting still, it would remain stationary. If it was moving at a constant velocity, it will keep moving. It takes force to change the motion of an object. What is meant by unbalanced force? If the forces on an object are equal and opposite, they are said to be balanced, and the object experiences no change in motion. If they are not equal and opposite, then the forces are unbalanced and the motion of the object changes. Examples from real life A soccer ball is sitting at rest. It takes an unbalanced force of a kick to change its motion. Two teams are playing tug of war. They are both exerting equal force on the rope in opposite directions. This balanced force results in no motion or no change in motion. If an object will remain to continue to move at constant velocity, why don't objects in motion keep moving forever? For example, throwing a ball upwards. If you throw a ball upwards, it will eventually slow down and fall because of the force of gravity. Sliding a book across the table, a book sliding across the table slows down and stops because of the force of friction acting on it. Let's take an example. Determine the missing force. Here we are given two upward forces of 14 newtons and 16 newtons. We will take up as positive and the required to find is Fg, it's the missing force. We're going to use F net equals zero. The solution is we're going to use F net equal 14 newton and plus 16 newton positive plus Fg. 0 equal 20 newton plus Fg. So Fg equal negative 20 newton. Fg equal 20 newton with the position down. Statement the force of gravity on the object is 20 newtons down. Newton's second law. If the net external for force on an object is not zero, the object will accelerate in the direction of this net force. The magnitude of the acceleration is directly proportional to the magnitude of the net force and inversely proportional to the mass of the object. To recall, acceleration is a measurement of how quickly an object is changing speed. In other words, small force is equal to small acceleration and large force is equal to large acceleration or it gives large acceleration. Acceleration is inversely related to the mass of the object. So here we have a small car, it has a large acceleration, but in opposite to it, a large truck has a smaller acceleration. F equals ma. Force is measured in newtons. 
equal mass in kilograms times acceleration meter per second square. For a falling object, Newton's second law can be used to justify that Fg equal mg, force of gravity equal mass times gravity. 1 Newton is equal to 1 kilogram m over second squared. Let's take an example. A net force of 43 newtons forward is applied to a ball of mass 0 0.27 kilograms. Determine the acceleration of the ball. We're given here the F net equal 43 newtons forward, a mass with a 0 0.27 kilograms. We're required to find the acceleration, and we're going to use F net equal mass times acceleration with up as positive. We're, the solution is F net equal mass times acceleration. We're going to rearrange the formula to find acceleration. So it's going to be F net over M, which is mass. We're going to divide 43 newtons over 0 0.27 kilograms, and it's going to give us 159 meter per second squared. And we're going to state it with two significant conditions according to the question. So the statement is the acceleration of the ball is 160 meter per second squared forward. Newton's third law, action and reaction. Third law of motion states that each action force that is equal in magnitude and opposite in direction. What does it mean? When you push a wall, this is the action and you feel the wall pushing back on you as a reaction. If you're on a skateboard while pushing the wall, it's the reaction force that causes you to accelerate away from the wall. Real life examples. A ball hits the ground with certain force, and this is the action, and the ground pushes back the ball with equal force as a reaction. As our foot pushes down the ground as a reaction, the ground pushes up as a reaction, which is equal and opposite. This reaction is responsible for our forward movement while walking. Let's take an example. A ball is stained on a skateboard and pushes on a wall with a force of 67 newtons south. The total mass of the boy and the skateboard is 61 kilograms. Determine the acceleration of the boy and explain why the wall doesn't move. When the boy pushes on the wall with a force of 67 newton sounds, the wall exerts an equal but opposite force of 67 newtons on the boy who is on the skateboard. So F net is equal to FA. So F net equal to force times acceleration. Mass times acceleration is going to be equal to positive 67 newtons. Mass of the boy is 61 kilograms times acceleration equals 67 newtons. Divide both sides by 61 kilograms. So acceleration is going to give us 67 over 61, which is 1.1 meter per second squared. The acceleration of the student is 1.1 meters per second squared north. To answer the question where it says explain why the wall doesn't move, since it's huge and anchored to the ground, the wall doesn't seem to move. The force with which the student or the boy pushes against the wall is insufficient to have any noticeable effect on the wall's motion. And here's the work starting. Thank you for listening.